Backyard Machine Shop. Well guys, I know it's been a couple months since I've made a video, but uh, honestly I've just been trying to knock out projects around here. I hadn't really been in the video mode. Uh, the videos take a lot of time to do and I was just getting further and further behind in some projects. So uh, I just spent the last couple months doing what I could do to get caught up. Uh, made a couple things. One, we've, uh, we've uh, completed as far as uh, the restoration here on the uh, Pratt Whitney lathe. Everything's back together. We've added a motor to motor mounts. You saw that in the last video I did. Uh, one of the things we haven't done to it is, uh, is we haven't put and installed the, the rod, the reversing rod. Um, I haven't restored the, uh, or haven't redone the steady rest, nor the uh, relieving attachment. So we got a little bit of stuff to do there. Um, one of the things I need to do to it is, you know, we've got the motor uh, sitting in place, uh, we got to, uh, we got to turn a four inch pulley, a flat pulley, and we're going to do that in a few minutes here, and that's going to be some of the machine work here in this video today. But uh, other than that, uh, it's ready to go. I got all the oars back in place. Um, not sure yet. I've got a five horse VFD I've really considered putting on here. And that way I can have variable speed along with the transmission, but I, I'm, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that. I may, um, hold on one second. I have this, uh, this reversing switch. And this reversing switch, I can't remember, may have came on this slave. I've got all kinds of switches here in the shop. Um, so I'm really considering if I don't use the VFD just to wire it in with a reversing switch and, uh, and be done with it. So... I haven't leveled it out yet, so when I get a little closer to to it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get everything leveled out. It looks like the motor's tilted a little bit. I think I measured it's off a sixteenth of an inch. It looks like a lot more than that, but we got to make a little adjustment there. The wiring's here, ready to go. Like I said, VFD or not VFD? Not sure. I mean, this is hundred year old, a uh, hundred year old lathe, and people weren't even thinking about having power uh, as far as electricity electric motors on them much less a variable frequency drive so um i'm, I'm really debating i hate to just it, it, if even if i put the vfd on it it's going to be mounted off the lathe somewhere and the switch to control it's going to be similar to what i have on the monarch i don't know how well that's going to look on it um, like i said i think i'm just going to keep the revert it, it's good sh Good possibility that I'm going to keep the reversing switch. Even if I use the VFD, I might wire up that reversing switch to drive it. Anyways, so uh, I got a chunk of cast iron around here somewhere. Um, I'm going to take it over to the, uh, to the to Kingston lathe and we're going to uh, punch a hole in it and, um, and then turn, some, turn it a little bit, get it right for this. And uh, I'll cover that with you. So uh, stay tuned. Go. All right, guys. So what we have here, we have a uh, we have a piece of four inch Durabar or cast iron, whatever you want to call it. And um, we're just going to come in here and we're going to punch a hole through it. We need an inch and a half uh, board hole. So actually, we're going to have a ring hole. So we're going to come in here with a couple of drill bits, drill it out, bust a reamer in there, and um, get it to size. And then we'll take it and, and complete it from there. All right, so we got a uh, a spot drill. We're going to just start out. We're just going to spot it. on the converter a pretty simple job um, we will make it too difficult so let's come in here make sure we got clearance just as far up as we can get you a little bit of let you see what's going on
bus here with this 1 8 crew. guys so we've got we drilled it up to an inch in 13 30 seconds so we got a little under hundred thousandths left to uh, take out of it so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna bore a couple passes and this will straighten out make sure everything is straight in the um, in the bore and then we're gonna ream it to size so We got a uh, we got an inch and a half reamer installed. Now, I've always been taught you drill a hole, you bore for straightness, and you ream for size. So this should ream out to an inch and a half is exactly what we need. The shafts are like a uh, thou and a half under. So let's see what I hope this reamer is good and accurate as far as size. Let's slow it down just a tad.
Right, so we're on our final pass here with the brooch. Now I've um I've already made two passes. And I, I forgot to hit record on the first one and the second one. And uh, I realized it here on this third one. So uh, what we have here is we have a 20 ton press and uh, the, the air operated pump is new. Uh, let me get a handle and we can work on that a little bit. So uh, I, I, I used to have to to uh, do this by pumping. I mean, there's a lot of pumping to pump out the strip on this uh, 20 ton um, jack. So anyway, third pass, final pass, and uh, we should be good. Okay guys, so there you have it, a uh, brooch T-weight. Um, tell you what, this air jack sure makes things whew, squeaky. Sure makes things nice instead of all that hand pumping. Um, There you have it, one, uh, one three-eighths keyway. All right, guys, so our next setup, uh, we've, we've keyed the pulley, and now we've taken a piece of key stock and um, let it stick out both sides. We've got it sitting down tight. We need a dead blow and pop down a little bit. Anyway, we got it sitting on a couple of uh, Joe blocks. These are sacrificial Joe blocks and um, using them for parallels. So we've got it set up. We've got, make sure everything's right. Now what we need to do is we need to find the center of this pulley. We want to be dead center, front to back, and sideways. So how we're going to get center um, in the x-axis is we're going to come down and we're going to touch off on the uh, on the um, keyway so we'll find the center of that keyway Take our X, zero it out, pick it up.
580,000 is exactly what it's supposed to be. Um, let's go X half. Bring that back to zero. exactly centered X and Y and um, now so all right guys so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and we're gonna spot this uh, spot this location and this spot drill if you go all the way down and let it let it chamfer you won't have to put a uh, Basically, we just put a countersink in there. Now we're going to come in with our uh, 5 16 drill. Oh, wrong chuck wrench. Okay. So now we got a 5 16 drill. Let's double check. Yep. So now we got a uh, 3816 tap, and we're going to uh, just going to power tap it down. All right, let's drop into low range.
it off by hand. Get a little tap wrench on it. There we go. Just trying to get through that little bit of keyway in there to that's in that corner. Find us a screw. This is just little miscellaneous ones. If I have to go dig one out of, that's a half. There you have it. So we got a got a keyway. We got us a set screw in it. Now we need to finish turning. All right, guys. So what we have now, like I said, we keyed it, we bored it, keyed it, and drilled a set screw. So what I have here now is I have a uh, a pump shaft that I had laying around here, and it's already turned an inch and a half. It's a good fit. Um, piece of stainless. Uh, I've indicated it in with a center in it, and um, now we're going to mount. We're going to mount this uh, this uh, pulley to the shaft. Okay. Like I said, it's a pretty good fit. Really ain't hitting it that good. So, you can go get an Allen wrench and tighten down the set screw. What we're doing here is uh, we need to turn a taper. Uh, flat shafts, flat shafts will not. Uh, the belts won't ride right on them without a taper. So we're truing the we're, we're true one thing we're doing, we're truing the um, we're actually truing the pulley to the making it concentric with the bore. Okay. And the second thing we're doing is um, we're gonna put a crown. So I know where center is. And what we're going to do is we're just going to come in here and we're going to set our, our compound at like two degrees and uh, put about a two degree taper on each side. We'll take the, take the uh, pulley off, flip it around, do the same thing. But what we're going to do right now is we're going to make sure what we indicated is still, still indicated. How about that? Okay. Uh, need a good indicator. All right, 
let's indicate as close as we can to that pulley. I know that pulley's way out, so because it was all right. So we're we're flirting with about a thou, maybe two thousandths there. So um, let's make that little adjustment. That's the low side. That's the high side. How are you gonna look at it? There we go. We can plus in the foul there. Okay. like we got to put the center in it. This center probably should have made a new shaft. Alright, so we're at uh, 5 inches, um, 70, 79,000, so we're 4 inches, 79,000. Okay, so we got a good bit of more to take off of this thing. Let's make a cut here. Alright, make a 50,000 pass, I'm going to pick up the... We're going to go to uh, 315 uh, and B. 315 RPMs. Let's pick this puppy up and go. All right, guys. So we got a we got our pulley sitting here, and we we found our center. And um, what I want to do is give ourselves a little mark here on it with the dicom. Let's see how we can do this without making a mess. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut from the center down and um, get that a second letter dry. 
machine. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so we're going what we want to do is we want to cut our taper from the center down and um, then we're going to take it off, flip it around and do the same thing. So uh, I've got the compound set at about two degrees and all, it, doesn't, it don't take much to get that crown. Just put a little crown in it and the, and the belt will track good. So what we want to do though is we want to take, find out where we're going to touch at. Okay, so you back your, back your taper out, and that's where we're going to start cutting. All right, so we're still at 315 RPMs. We're going to be feeding it by hand, and like I said, we're cutting a two-degree taper. And it would help to put it in gear. So... So what I've done is I had to switch. I switched to a cement and carbide tool. Uh, the tool I had in there just needed more cut. And we take it about 10 thousandths at a time. Okay, this one should be it. We're gonna run right there until it touches.
best finish. Okay, so what we got to do now is we got to reverse it, feed it the other direction, and do the same thing. Stand by and I'll come back in. That's, I think that's what do it. Uh, now I can come in and measure what size belt I need to uh, hook this thing up. Uh, I may or may not build a hand wheel out here. The one that was on it was broke. I got one good one, but it's just ugly. Uh, I played around with a hand wheel wheel that I had in here, just a regular hand wheel. Maybe use that. Then again, I might I might turn one. So or cut the shaft off. Who knows? Uh, the lathe pretty much is complete. Um, like I said, there's a couple of things that need to be put back on and painted up and cleaned up. There's some, you know, some some rust. This shop, it's horrible. I've been, I have been keeping it heated the uh, the last few days, trying to keep a lot of this uh, this rust out of here. But I hate to see what my electric bill's going to be. Um, other than that, it, uh, I think I'm ready to measure a belt. Um, start thinking about how to control the motor, and uh, and we'll be good. I know it's been it had been a while since I've made a video. Um, like I said, I just taken a little break. This really cons to, making videos consumes a lot of time. I mean, it it it, it uh, setting up cameras and and editing and things like that. It it's consumes a lot of time. So I've gotten so far behind here in the shop with things I wanted to do. And I still ain't nowhere near finished, but at least I've, I've made some progress. So, uh, what I have done, and there's upcoming videos, I've ran airline all through the shop, and I'll throw a couple pictures in there. It's not finished, but I'm using it, so that's how close to finish it is. Uh, I think I put in 300 feet of, of airline total between half inch and three quarter. Now, this shop that you see me work in here. It's um, it's only half of it. The other half it's it's unpresentable right now. Uh, but I still got to finish the airlines over there, and, and I got to put I got all the drops in here. And I've pressure tested it. And there's little leaks everywhere. I'm I'm good with that though. Um, I'm not tearing all this line apart and trying to fix a little leak. It, it compressor starts up every couple hours or something like that. I just file it off every night before I go to bed or leave out of here. So uh, anyway, um, I really, I really uh, love doing this, and, it's, and I know that, I, like I said, I've been lazy about doing it, and um, just wanted to spend some time. And uh, every week I, I planned on making a video, and it seems like I never got to it that week. So from now on, you can count on me making some videos. I'm, I'm trying to get this finished. It's on the ground, first time since. I've had it. I pulled it off the trailer, loaded it up on my ro on its roller skates, and it's been on that ever since. A couple days ago, I actually picked it up and put it on the ground. I built some little feet for it, and um, it hadn't been leveled yet, but it, it needs to be leveled. But this is where it's it's here. It's where it's supposed to be. Um, so I'm I'm, I'm getting there because I'm really wanting to start on another project, and I promised myself I wasn't going to start on another machine until I finished this one. So I'm I'm pushing it out, you know. Um, there is a couple of things I need. Somebody can look out for me or know where I can get them. Uh, the wicking for for this thing. Let's see if I can get it off. Now I might can just use regular wicking. I'm not sure. Uh, let's take the whole thing out. All right, so it's got a uh, it's got a wick, and this one's got a metal. A stem in it okay um, oh, here's the screw that takes it off so I haven't been able to locate any of this wicking but anyway this oiler these are the original oilers on it and I like to use those I, I mean honestly I think glass oilers have better look better but these are the originals but this is, is a wick with a metal um, stem in it so if you know where i can pick this up at i would appreciate let me know if not i'm just going to use regular wicking and um be done with it so i'm let me know i appreciate it the other thing is um, i'm gonna need a leather belt and i've already talked to, to someone about it and i think we're gonna be able to work that out so 
Uh, other than that, I'm, a few more things I need to put on. And um, I think we might can make some chips with this little girl. So I want to thank everyone for, uh, with that said, I want to thank everyone for, for the concern. There's been a lot of emails asking where I've been and if I'm all right. Yeah, I'm fine. Back. Uh, I at least want to do one video a week, maybe two. Uh, I just, it's just getting out here and doing it. I, I went to work and I worked three days a week and or three days Friday Saturday and Sunday and I, I took that shift mainly where I can work in this shop now I have been working in this shop I just haven't been making videos I've actually been doing a lot of work in this shop I've, I've, um, I've got a few paid jobs that came through since I've made a video uh, things like that I don't I don't record I might start one day but you know people paying for it and again it takes so much time so I usually try to knock it out and get it out of here as soon as I can. So uh, anyways, I want to thank all my subscribers. Um, thank everybody that watches. Everybody that leaves a, a, a hits the like button and um, leaves a comment. I mean, I, I enjoy reading them. Um, so with that said, uh, so long from the Backyard Machine Shop.